Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the uh, webinar this afternoon, the Executive Circle, Leveraging Marketing Automation to Align Sales and Marketing. Today, we have our panelists from Anderson Windows and Sixth Sense, and then also have worked on this webinar to bring you this information with Adobe. So special thank you to Anna Bender, Business Development Manager, who's helped coordinate. And Carolyn and Jennifer, thank you for joining us as well today. Carolyn, do you want to provide us a brief introduction? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Happy to be here. I have worked with uh, Anderson for the last three and a half years. Prior to that, I worked at Cummins and also in the retail industry and have doubled between uh, marketing and sales in roles like uh, channel design development, uh, supply chain, inventory management, and uh, more recently marketing, uh, channel marketing, if you will. So happy to be here and uh, thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Caroline. And Jenny? Hi, everyone. I'm Jenny Lieski. I'm Director of Customer Marketing with Sixth Sense. I've been with Sixth Sense for um, over two years. Prior to that, I was Director of Digital Marketing Operations at a security company. And it goes all the way back to uh, starting the very first intranet with Lotus Notes at a financial services company. So my history is pretty long, um, always being the bridge between communications, marketing, and um, technology slash IT. And I'm super excited to be here today. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do is just kind of level set the conversation a little bit is just talk about um, marketing automation in, in general and kind of how you progress with marketing automation, because that's really what helps us within these certain phases to align with sales. Um, this is the marketing automation progression model, and it really talks about where you're at in phase zero, just doing experimental things. And then as you move to a marketing automation platform and then all the way through stage four with you know, global omni-channel um, and attribution. So the way that we highlight these things and the kind of sections that go across the top is that you know, aligning marketing and sales and using automation is just not the technology itself. It's the people, the process and the technology. And the technology is just not the automation platform you're using, but also the CRM system that you're using and all the other systems that connect to it. And so we'll highlight a little bit of this today as we um, we talk as well. Um, you know, the two, you know, the technologies, the people, the processes, they're kind of sandwiched in between both the business impact and then the progress triggers as you move from one phase to the next. Um, the other thing that we highlight um, that is not part of this or listed here particularly is patience, right? Marketing automation, you know, leveraging it to get, you know, marketing and sales alignment is a long process, right? Um, there's a lot of things you need to do and that process never ends. You're always going back and reevaluating things to see how you can get better and get those improvements. So, you know, we'll reference this today um, and we'll also share this out with um, everyone that's participating um, after the call as well. Um, so the first, you know, question that, you know, we, we get asked often is just, you know, what, when you look at marketing and sales alignment, right, what is the most biggest impact that marketing automation has had for you? And so as we get started, Caroline and Jenny, I'd like to give that um, question to both of you, you know, within, you know, Anderson Windows and Sixth Sense. When you think about marketing automation, what is what is the biggest impact that it has had specifically on marketing and sales? Um, Caroline, you want to answer first? Sure. Thanks for that question. It's a it's a really good one. Um, I think marketing automation is really critical for sales and marketing as it gets the two organizations on the same same page, if you will. The page being the customer experience. And so when you start off with the customer experience and work backwards and then figure out what roles sales and marketing plays in that journey, it becomes easier to figure out, well, we need to be able to have the same information. We need to be able to deliver timely um, projects and quotes. We need to know the customer very intimately. And so like you mentioned earlier with having a CRM and your marketing automation strategies in sync in, in the, uh, the desire to reach the customers in, in a better, simpler, easier fashion and to deliver a customer experience, it becomes very critical. And so we know that 
uh, both uh, sales and marketing, in my view, are two sides of the same coin. Um, and so working together to just, again, address those customer um, experiences in, in, in a fast, efficient, um, and easy way is what really differentiates companies today in the eyes of the consumer. So being able to have access to, as, as I mentioned, customer data, prevent duplication, uh, you know, respond to problems in a timely manner, aligning both marketing and sales to make sure that that a customer experience um, is being delivered, I think is is the ultimate uh, prize that that marketing automation can bring. So I see it in my role um, at Anderson and also previous roles in other companies. Um, the companies that do this really well really succeed. Awesome. Thank you, Caroline. Um, and Jenny, same question um, for you. What, where have you seen the biggest impact uh, with marketing and sales at Six Sense? Um, wow, I have to plus one everything Caroline just said because I do think um, first and foremost, it's all about the customer and it's about delivering the right information at the right time via the right channel um, and being able to do that in the in the right format that they want it in. And so from a marketing automation, you know, having that be one piece of the puzzle, I think that biggest impact between marketing and sales is getting everybody aligned on how we target that customer experience and making sure we're all going after the same North Star. So what this, I've seen this in the past two years since I've been at Sixth Sense and in former lives too, is it helps level the playing field between those two. So, you know, sometimes there's a bit of this head, head bashing going on between the two groups. And if everybody agrees, you know, it's not about MQLs or SQLs, it's, a, it's about the end goal of generating pipe. Um, or if you're in customer success, renewals, upsells, that kind of thing, you agree on what that end goal is and in, in just working backwards, marketing automation helps you just quickly, easily streamline all of those tactics, I think, to achieve that goal. But at the end of the day, the, the biggest alignment I've seen is having a common goal and a common dictionary, per se, of the things that... Um, will get us to where we need to be. Does that make sense? That does, yes, yes. Um, you you just mentioned, Jenny, you know, kind of starting and working backwards. How do you guys do that at Sixth Sense? Where do, where do you start from to actually work backwards? Like the higher level company goals, it's something more specifically within sales? Yep, at Sixth Sense, we um, follow the V2 mom model. And so... I forget what they all are, but I know the first one's vision, measuring, something, something. So we follow the V2MA model, and that is set, right, at, for every year. And we've, oh, we've got like six or seven top goals. I'm sure it's six because we do everything in sixes. We've got six top goals that we are going out after. And then everything that we are doing up to those goals from a, a, a revenue perspective, we have a goal. We want to be a... $200 million company, how are we going to get there? Here's the things that we need to do to be able to drive towards that. And then as you go through the organization, right, that all starts to break down. Oh, we need 70% from net new and 30% from um, customer renewal and upsell or whatever that formula is that is decided upon. And I'm just totally making up those numbers since I'm not in finance. Um we we you then use that and then again north star sales and mar marketing know okay we need to hit x goals how are we going to get there and then it just you know it's that pyramid and then it just goes down as people start to identify their goals for the quarter and the year and then the tactics to support those goals um and then how how does that ultimately um roll up where marketing automation plays such an important role for us is that measurement understanding what is working? How well is it working? What impact has it had? What should we start, stop, and continue doing? And so having that clarity rather than just like throwing spaghetti at the wall, right? Like I like I, I mean, I have to admit there was days in my career where it's just like, oh, we feel like this would be fun to do. Let's do it. Um, without understanding the like our end goals and what we wanted to achieve. So so yeah, that's kind of what we do at Six Sense. Awesome, awesome. Caroline, do you um, do you guys do that as well at Anderson as far as starting somewhere and working backwards? Is it always at those high-level goals? Or are you guys doing that a little bit different? 
No, it's pretty, thanks for that question. It's pretty much the same. And so as um, Jenny mentioned, we do have, you know, of course, like every other company strategy sessions where sales and marketing come together to define that common goal and to make sure that everybody's aligned and on the same page. And then we take it from there, you know, down, down a few levels uh, as far as the sales process. Um, the end goal there is to close and win projects, right? Um, as far as the sales process goes, we know that there's other things from, you know, marketing cloud, sales cloud, service cloud, et cetera. But I'm talking about that sales process, um, defining that and then making sure that we can align the different marketing activities that support the sales process. Uh, just to make sure that we end up with a good, healthy pipeline and uh, close win projects. So it's very similar um, as as Jenny mentioned earlier. Awesome. awesome. And Caroline, when you first were sharing, you know, what you guys do at, um, you know, Anderson, one of the things you mentioned was just the, the data. And it, it got me thinking about when people always talk about, you know, one version of the truth, right? And so you've, you know, got a, a CRM platform that's working with your marketing automation platform. Um, how do you guys manage that that one version of the truth between those platforms so everybody's telling the same story? Well, that's a great question. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of, you know, consensus, you know, kind of meetings and making sure that everybody's aligned with the, with the goal in mind. And then also as far as the different steps from beginning to end and that whole customer experience, as I mentioned earlier, what are the key um, metrics or, or data points, if you will, that let us know where we're heading in the right path. So you have to define that and agree on that and align on that. And then you, you start to inject the different uh, systems or marketing automation tools that help you reach those goals. So you can continuously uh, monitor your progress, you know, whether you're going up or down or if you need to adjust something. Uh, but, you know, it looks pretty sleek once you've outlined that whole process. Obviously, it involves, you know, more than just sales and marketing. IT is involved. You know, you got to have the right systems in place and the right processes to begin with before you start implementing some of these um, uh, journey mapping is what I like to call it for the different customer types. Um, so therefore you can then um, create or or implement those different processes and tools and automations required to get you to those goals, but making sure you have measurements in place um, for every step of the way. And also um, communicating to your customers, you know, whether it's you know, getting more information, uh, enticing them to look again or, you know, purchase or talk to someone or download this or attend a webinar. You you know them so intimately and, the, and your marketing automation tools know exactly when to reach the customers, as Jenny mentioned earlier, the right time, uh, because that's important in terms of that whole sales process. So uh, long story short, but that's uh, that's what we, we try to do at Anderson. Awesome, awesome. I mean, one thing my, you know, my background was sales years ago and then switched over into to marketing. And I remember, you know, early on before there was marketing automation, right? Um, there was always this dysfunction between sales and, and marketing and sales was always complaining that they weren't getting enough leads and marketing was saying, hey, we got you this list. You know, those are all your leads. And so really it was about trying to get people on the same idea of what the definitions are, you know, between the two groups and, and really what each group is looking for from the other. And you know, getting to the realization that it's normal to kind of have that dysfunction. The the concern is when, you know, marketing and sales stop talking to each other because then it's like they're not really caring about what the other one is doing and kind of on their own, you know, in their own silo moving things forward. Um, is there something that, you know, you guys have experienced where, you know, you were going through this process, you're using marketing automation to help align marketing to what sales is doing to, to you know, sell that consistent story up to the organization? Um, was there a point within something you were doing within marketing automation where like alignment just started to click? Jenny, I'll ask you that first. That's a really good question, Tracy. At Sixth Sense, we focus on accounts. So we're, we're interested in what accounts are showing interest in, um, in us. And that's actually, you know, the software that we, that we have, which like helps illuminate the dark funnel. So when you when we think about it at Sixth Sense, we look at like the what we call you know the buying stages, consideration or 
sorry, awareness, you know, target awareness, consideration, decision, and purchase. Those are kind of the stages. And we use marketing automation to build really complex orchestrations based off of what accounts are exhibiting which kind of buying behaviors at what stage based on what their profile is too. And so when you kind of have that, um, I'll call it a grid for lack of a better word of, and let's just talk about maybe it's email. Uh, if if a particular account is is at this particular stage, let's send them these three email or this particular email campaign that includes these three pieces of content. And the idea is to measure them and you obviously want them to progress down the pipe, right? And so you can use then all that measurement to understand are they progressing? But the cool thing is it's all tied in into our sales force. So both sales, marketing, anybody can go in there and see, did this account interact? What did this account do? What resonated with them? So when a salesperson gets on the, on the phone and whether it's early in the funnel and they're just initiating a conversation, it doesn't need to be creepy like, oh, I see that you're interested in consulting services. You know, you just bring up the topic more general, like, and and use that as an icebreaker. But it's a, again, you know, the right time because you know that they're showing those um, signals that they're interested in it. And so, being able to really um, have those complex orchestrations, which would have taken, you know, months five years ago, right? I mean, even five years ago, it would have taken a long time to do it. Um, now you can set it up, and you can even go as bonkers as you want with I want email I want advertising oh they're right here okay let's now do a, a, a gift offer because they're really showing intent and so you can like build, build all your tactics so cool cool to, and have them be so together and then you can measure it off I yeah. obviously get excited about this stuff <laughs> I couldn't agree more Jenny couldn't agree more. I mean, we, we, we're we the same in that we want the uh, alignment between sales and marketing to be, you know, to be more um, robust, if you will. And traditionally, what I've seen is, you know, sales thinks that marketing comes in when you want to provide promotional goods um, or sponsor shows and events. Marketing is so much more than that. Marketing can bring in the leads that the sales can warm up and translate into um, you know, with one projects, if you will. So that transparency and consistency in the approach is so critical and both sales and marketing play a role. As Jenny mentioned, you can literally mirror the sales process with the buyer journey and see the different activities that both sales and marketing have to do to move the, the, the customer along the journey. So if you overlay the sales process over the buying buying process you will see there's so much uh, synergy and so many similarities that you know as far as that customer experience goes it's just a different lingo or terminology based on whether you're in sales or marketing but it's the same thing with the same goals so i just love what jenny just said awesome awesome and caroline as you guys went through this process to really you know look at aligning the teams um i know it's something that you know you're always working at as, a, as an organization, but what do you think is the hardest part? Yeah, you know, when you look at sales and, you know, the sales organization and marketing, as I mentioned earlier, there are two sides of the same coin. And, and sometimes there's that breakdown in communication, as you mentioned earlier, or oh, we we're talking different languages, but really when you sit down and you listen and learn and and translate, you're actually talking the same thing. So I feel like to promote alignment, uh, we, we need to be at the same table, right, in the strategy sessions, both sales and marketing. Um, because I found that in, you know, I found in, in past experiences, marketing is an afterthought when really marketing should be at the same table as sales, talking about the customer experience and uh, um, outlining the differences and similarities between the activities required to take customers along this uh, buying decision or sales process, whatever you look at, like I mentioned, it's the same. It's just, you know, 
different speak, if you will, but we are talking the same language. So that that making sure that people are communicating and uh, articulating um, the value that marketing brings, the value that sales bring, you'll find that we're we're more often than not speaking the same language. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree. I mean, when we I present a lot and talk to you know executives and you know CEOs and you know, investment people trying to look at different companies. And that's one of the things that we always talk about is like, who should be at that table? And one of the interesting things that, you know, people usually say is, well, you know, why marketing? Like marketing, you know, they don't have a seat at the table. And my response to the marketer, who's a little bit nervous to get to the table is you either need to be at the table or you're getting eaten there, right? Like marketing has really turned from, you know, they're just an expense, you yes. know, the company where their revenue driving center. And so, you know, being able to have that tight story is so, so important. Absolutely, um, Tracy. When you think about the different marketing activities and where, you know, 20 or so years ago, we weren't able to measure return on investment. I think when you look at the current marketing automation tools, you can certainly do that um, and show, um, you know, through these tools, how many people you're reaching, how many people have expressed interest, how many folks have downloaded some 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 article in let's say an email when we call out the call to action how many people attended a webinar um so so you can now start tracking the real return on investment marketing brings to an organization a lot faster quicker better um to really justify that marketing does have an impact on sales and deserves a seat at the table you know i also awesome. think it kind of starts at the top too with executive leadership, right? And in, in past, like I've been um, some organizations where marketing and sales have not necessarily been aligned in, in driving, driving towards that North Star. And if, if your execs aren't aligned, then like that's a, that's a pretty hard hill to climb. But um, at, at Sixth Sense, what I think is just phenomenal is the executive leadership team and their, their alignment. And I would even go so far as to say is um, we think of ourselves more like a, a revenue operations or revenue generation, revenue generating team and trying to like knock down those kind of labels of marketing versus sales. So it's marketing sales. And I would throw customer success in there, too, because I think customer success, you know, retaining customers and, and treating customers. Um, making them feel valued and making sure that they're getting the most out of their investment is, you know, awesome. I get to do it every day as in customer marketing, but at the end of the day, it's all about dollars too, right? And getting a net new customer is what, like seven to time, seven to nine times more expensive than keeping a current customer happy and, and then working towards those expansions or upsells. So I, in my current role, I get to do lots of fun stuff and events and, and things to make customers feel very um, warm and fuzzy about Sixth Sense. But I know, you know, at the end of the day, if I put my business hat on, like there's real hard dollar reasons why we're doing that, because we want customers to stay our customers. And that's why we kind of have that customer customers first mentality. That's why I think you got to have customer success, marketing, and sales as all part of that revenue operations, revenue generation team. Awesome. Awesome. So I want to just kind of turn our attention a little bit instead of talking about some more of these higher level concepts and just dig a little bit more into the marketing automation piece of this alignment between marketing and sales. Um, and Jenny, I'll ask you first, of all the different features that, you know, you've used at different companies, you know, that are part of marketing automation platforms, which one do you personally feel like has the biggest impact on alignment between sales and marketing? Ugh. Uh, that's a really hard question, Tracy. To me, I think it is, you know, whether you're using a, a Marketo or a HubSpot or an Adobe, like whatever you're using, right? It It's having that uh, alignment, it's having that clear visibility into the data and having it be the same thing. Because you could, I could say, oh, well, hey, I had 3,000 people register for an event. It was successful. Well, like, and 10 people signed up for it, right? Or maybe 3,000 people registered for the event and 300 people attended it, but it only turned into $2 worth of opportunity. So, like understanding and having that clarity and the definitions, I think is like the most important part from 
regardless of the platform that you, you know, whatever vendor you choose, being able to expose that to everybody and not have it be, oh, we only have two licenses here. So you guys get to see this part and four licenses here. And then you get to see this part. And then you end up like doing these crazy Excel spreadsheets on the back end to try and like piece together this insane like formula for whatever. Like that I think is pretty hard. So it's just access and um consistency okay awesome and caroline yourself same question yeah that's a really good question and you know with my you know just three and a half years at anderson um and just in general what i think you know that that automation tool that i feel brings sales and marketing together you know i'm i'm data driven and so I feel like you could start anywhere depending on what your strategy is, but you know, depending on how difficult or complex or easy uh, you know, your product or service is. But when you're dealing with a lot of customers, I feel like a CRM solution tied to a lot of these other, other tools is, is critical because first you gotta have the, the right data. If you don't have the right data, then you know, pretty much everything else won't um succeed if you will so you know i've found difficulties in keeping the data clean in a crm and i feel like if people do that first everything else falls in line in terms of creating those customer journey mappings um you know email campaigns google analytics etc you can start building with that data so for me uh having a good CRM in place first is, is the most critical piece, which then you can build upon. So that's what, that's what I would say. I would, add, I would plus one that, sorry, sorry, Tracy, I would plus one that. And I would say not only having a good CRM in place, but having everybody recognize that as your single source of truth, because you can have, I mean, we've all seen the charts of you know, yes. a bajillion mark marketing tech solutions out there, but everybody's got to agree on that single source of truth. Otherwise it's like, it's crazy town. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, over the years, when you talk about the, you know, source of truth, I remember years ago, like the CRM, that was what, you know, the truth was. So whatever the salesperson put into the CRM, that's what they went with. And now back to your point around integration with the, you know, CRMs, Right now that the marketing automation platform can connect to the CRM, you have a very seamless story of what's happening to leads as they go from the initial phase of just targeting and awareness all the way to the point where clients are making decisions to purchase. And so I think that the story is much more streamlined and really provides a lot more transparency to sales about what marketing is doing and vice versa. Exactly. Um, as, you, as you guys have, have gone through this, um, is there like if you had to pick like the biggest hurdle that you've experienced, what would that, what would that be? <laughs> I can go biggest hurdle with just CRM or just in general with uh, marketing automation tools. And I would say, you know, some of these tools are not cheap, you know, so you gotta be able, be able to, justify the expense which we all know you know it's it's good to have right but we want to be able to at least outline the return on investment or when we'll get to that return on investment so again it depends on how many licenses you know the cost etc but i think the biggest hurdle i think also is um technology is still pretty new to a lot of people and so training and letting them see the benefit of doing this and having this is i think one of the biggest hurdles um you know i think up to this day we still have a lot of folks who are not comfortable using crm uh who don't speak crm either and they're just used to writing stuff down in their notebooks or you know on their computer versus in a crm so making those updates as needed as they meet their customers so you, you find that people are still used to the traditional ways of um, managing their customers instead of using the CRM tool. And I know we have things like, uh, you know, like a mobile app for CRMs. Like if you're talking about Salesforce, they have a mobile app to try to make it easy for you to just 
make updates on your cell phone. Uh, but I feel like that's still a hurdle for a lot of folks to, to remember and to use because I don't think they're bought into um, the whole, um, the advantage or the purpose of CRM and what it provides or what it can provide because it's still a new technology, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So as we as we get better and then as we use it and as we show return on investment, I think it'll get easier. Awesome. Awesome. And Jenny, same question to you, the, the hurdles. Yeah, for me, I think personally, as I think through my um, my professional journey here is um, the shiny new tool syndrome. And so like everybody, oh my God, we got to go out and we got to get this, this technology. It is going to solve all the world's hunger problems. And like everybody just thinks that technology is like the silver bullet to whatever the business problem is. And, uh, oh, we need more social likes. We should go get social sprout or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And for me, I think it goes back to Tracy, something you, you said, like you kicked off a call with it's people process and technology. Like you have to really look at, do you have the people to support it? What are the processes to support it? How does it all align into that business goals that you're trying to, to do? And then go find the technology. So many times I've been brought we need to go get product X. Well, well, why? What are we, what are we trying to do? What value is it going to bring? Do we have something ex like existing that we could leverage that we could maybe build on or geez, maybe they've got an add on that we could throw into the mix. So uh, for me personally, it's shiny new tool syndrome because Mm -hmm. Salespeople do their jobs really, really well. They get people all hyped up <laughs> and then you're like, well, well, why do why do we need this thing? Because maybe there's something we have that you all didn't even know about. And now you've already gotten 14 people excited about it. And then, you know, having to really kind of level set that conversation. So I think that's my biggest Absolutely. hurdle. Absolutely. I think that's interesting what you brought up, too, about people, process, and technology. Because, you know, um, you know I mean, the marketing automation, automation platforms like early on in the day they did such a great job you know selling themselves as a silver bullet right you're going to get this a marketing automation platform you're going to connect it to your crm and leads are going to fall out of the sky right and i think that you know having people really understand that it isn't a that silver bullet right and that you're going to need to really understand you know do you have the right resources right what are what is the sla between marketing and sales and are the process processes aligned and then making sure that the technology can really talk to each other. And then my favorite one that we always have to talk with people about is patience. Like you're not going to get that alignment right away, right? It's, you know, once you, you're going to need some data to be able to make really good decisions to start getting your campaigns to do what you want them to do. Right. And so it's not just a, you know, it's, it's marketing automation. I feel like is not a short game. Right. And, and people kind of need to under understand that as well. And, and to that, how long has it taken to really align marketing and sales um, uh, at your organization? Jenny, I'll ask you that question first. Well, at, at six cents, I'd say they're aligned because it's kind of the premise of the business. In former lives, um, you know, it's taken like a big project to get teams to rally around. And so whether that's a rebuild, it was, you know, a rebuild of Marketo or a rebuild of Salesforce or, um, you know, a, a different, different sort of tool, having that project where both teams can come to the table. And usually I find that takes anywhere from 12 to 18 months. Like it is a, it's, it's a long conversation and a lot of socialization. Um, you know, and, and the other, the other thing besides the time is your data. And I know that data is not sexy, but that is like garbage in garbage out. So you're not going to be effective at anything. If you've got bad data, if you've got a bajillion duplicates or your accounts are don't have um, countries in their fields and, you know, all the things that you are using or industry or any of those things that you think you're going to be using to leverage to, to drive some sort of customization slash personalization. If the data isn't good and you're not getting it, then I think um, it, it makes it really hard to have any sort of uh, alignment because you're dealing yeah. with garbage <laughs> yeah 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 no i couldn't agree more and i think for us 
you know, I think the alignment is there. I just think it's a continuous thing and we're, we're, always, gonna, we're always going to need to continuously align as we get more sophisticated with marketing automation tools and what they can do. And I feel like we're just, a lot of us are just scratching the surface of what we can do with, with all these tools. So I think, you know, the alignment is there. It's just a continuous journey, if you will. Awesome, awesome. And if you had to give, and I'll give you this question first, hon, if you had to give somebody one piece of advice, right? They're new to an organization, right? They've made the decision that, um, you know, they wanna move forward with marketing automation to help get some alignment. What is one piece of advice that you would give them? Wow, that's a really, really good question. I think, uh, you know, starting small might be my answer. We'll see, it might change, but I think starting small because it, it can get to be overwhelming. Um, as mm -hmm. we've talked already, data is king. So before you start, make sure that, you know, the teams are aligned and the data is there. And then just start off small and then work your way up, depending on what the goal and strategy of the organization is. As far as, you know, do you have customer segmentation? Do you have the right data in place? Do you have, um, you know, of course, alignment and budgets all finalized? And then just starting small, depending on, again, what your goals are. Do you just want to email your customers? Do you want to nurture them? Do you want to promote more? customer experience, there's different solutions for all those different goals. Uh, but I always say to start small because you might, you don't want to bite more than you can chew. And so that's what I would say. It's just, you know, start small or, or just experiment and, and see where you're at. Um, obviously, you know, com all companies should have a website. Um, so Google Analytics is a great place to start. Um, you know, looking at lead generation, um, and like I mentioned, email marketing or customer journeys, depending on how far you are with your strategies. So I'd say start start off with something manageable and then build on that. Awesome, awesome. And Jenny, same question to you. What would be your one piece of advice to somebody who's just getting into this? Um, I think I would, I if I were like having coffee with somebody, I'd be like, Probably the, the the thing that has worked best for me in my career is starting with a data-driven business case and obtaining that executive support. So you've got you're making data-driven decisions. You're not making, oh, well, Jenny really likes purple, therefore let's have purple. Um, you're coming to the table and you're getting that executive support. And then I totally agree with Caroline. I think multi-phased approach is is the absolute way to go, starting small and getting those wins small and then building up, trying to swallow the ocean and say, we're gonna, we're gonna implement a, a, a five different channel strategy using blah, blah, blah. I mean, you're just setting yourself up for success or for failure because it's too complicated. And so totally agree with Caroline, but I think that executive support to, to have to know you've got that behind you when you start having these conversations because there's nothing worse than trying to get to tr going to another department um, and saying hey we're doing this project and we're hoping you can do help us with this and they're like mm, no and if you don't have your executive team behind you it's like this is a business priority so so no means yes and you don't get to say no you can say maybe not next week but maybe next month kind of answers so for me, I think that's that's important. Awesome, awesome. Um, so one of the questions that we got prior to the call was um, from somebody who works in an organization where their marketing automation is already in place. They, they're integrated to Salesforce, right? They have some basic marketing and sales alignment and they're asking what's next. So what would your recommendation um, be to them, Jenny? I go. I kind of go back to um, your goals and business strategies. What are you doing to to ladder up to your goals and your strategies? And what are those tactics that you can do? Um, I'm a firm believer in creating project briefs, and so you state what state your your project, what you're going to do, and those expected measurements, and having that all laid out. 
will then help you as you look and start thinking, you know, it, it dry, it removes the spaghetti from the wall kind of approach because you're identifying what, Hey, we, we want to see a 10% upsell in um, sales user licenses. So we want to do a campaign. We want to have display ads. We want to have email. We want to do uh, create an enablement kit for our CS team to be able to use these slides in their meetings that they have, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, I think it's once you've got that foundation in place, then identifying the next things that you want to be able to do with it. For example, at Six Sense, we we have of course we have Salesforce, we've got um, Marketo, but we didn't really have a good way to communicate with customers. We didn't have a good defined audience for those primary folks that our CS team was interfacing with. So developing that strategy foundation, which I you know is like a building block of how do we pick out the key people on each account that we want to communicate with so it doesn't sit on all the shoulders of the CSMs. So we built that mechanism to be able to pull out those, those contacts and the CS team identifies who they are, but then we can, a, we're able to use that list for all sorts of different things. So when you start thinking about the things you want to do, you might need to step back and build up some of that technical muscle in some of those things, but it helps you kind of have a clear vision. Awesome, awesome. And Jenny, or sorry, Caroline, um, you as well, what, what would you say is next for somebody who's got the integration in place, they've got that initial marketing and sales alignment, and they're looking to take things to the next level? Yeah, I, I agree with everything Jenny said. And plus, um, just making sure that you have all your processes outlined, uh, you know, to, to be able to start using those tools. Um, and also have that content. I find that sometimes content is lacking. So you might want to, you know, when you're talking to, let's say you create the processes for your different segments and you realize you don't have content to feed these different customer groups. So I'd say look at your content strategy. Um, you, you could be able to repurpose content across different audiences depending on where they're at during the buying journey or the customer journey. And then, of course, create content that is more specific to the customers you're looking at. Once you have the content, you'll be able to use your your tools to to target uh, different customers at, at you know specific times uh, during their purchasing journey. So I think uh, content would be another good place to look at, as I find that as a um, that sometimes is not as robust as people think, and might need to create uh, content. So awesome. Awesome. Um, so another one of the questions that was sent in before, I'll read here in just a minute. Um, but for any of those of you that are on the line and have a question for either Caroline or Jenny, please go ahead and use the chat and we'll um, read those questions and answer those as well. Um, and in the meantime, I'll continue to go through the questions that were provided prior to the, the session today. Um, the next question that was sent in is about um, somebody who's experiencing, you know, they have the technology in place, right? They feel like they have the people to run the technology, they have a process, but they're still off from an alignment perspective between sales and marketing. And before it gets any worse, they're looking for some advice on how to like fix it or get it back on track. Any, any advice for them, Caroline or Jenny? Yeah, um, I find that when there's still not alignment or buy-in um, to do a test, you know, like a pilot, if you will, because usually what you find is if you can prove success with a small group or a pilot or a test group, most people are able to see the results and imagine um, what that would look like at a larger scale. So, of course, the proof is in the pudding, and so sometimes when you know, when you talk and talk and say, this is the right thing to do, we've talked, we've gotten buy-in, this is the right, you know, everyone's doing this, we'll be able to do that. Doing a test and, and showing success can switch people from, who, you know, people who are on the fence to becoming more aligned with the goal or the strategy or the direction. And so for me, my, I would say to, to do tests, you know, like in test markets or with test groups or things of that nature and proof success, um, which will, which will, you know, enable you to roll out if you will. So I think doing pilots and tests would help in that case. Awesome. Awesome. I, and Jenny, I totally, I yeah, I totally agree with Caroline. I think, um, 
you know, positioning it as, well, there's no harm if we try this, right? Um, and like, there's no such thing as failure. You can either decide that it didn't work or it, it works great and let's improve it and do it again. Um, I think the other important thing, like if, if you're kind of struggling with that alignment is celebrating all your successes and celebrating them publicly, right? So whether you're like, hey guys, cool story to share with you, whether it's on Slack or whether you're managing up and you're making sure that your manager knows these things or whether you're, you volunteer, like I volunteered to go to so many meetings and talk about things and just share the stuff because, well, I think it's great. And I think everybody knows it. Like, like I can't, you know, repeat, repeat, repeat how many times, especially in marketing, are we told that you need to do that? So I, I literally am putting myself out there all the time. I will come to meetings. I will do these things. I will sound completely silly on Slack just to raise awareness over and over again of all of the the cool things that are doing. So then somebody sees that and they're like, oh, dang, yeah, this this seems to be really working. We should blah, blah, blah. So it just kind of gives you validity as you as you share those um, successes and celebrate them. And don't be shy. I mean, don't be shy about, I mean, you don't need to be like, putting up billboards about yourself, but don't be shy in sharing <laughs> success and, and, and letting your boss know, Hey, we had, a, we had, a um, we had 200 people attending this webinar and like that is an increase of 50% from the last webinar that we had. So yay for us. And now we're going to measure it and see what happens if it, you know, if they go farther down the funnel, but yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of value in that. I couldn't agree more. I think communication is key. So again, with that whole test or pilot, and like Jenny said, what could go wrong? If we fail, we'll learn. If we succeed, we can roll it out. And then also bringing people in to participate in those test uh, projects, if you will, so that they can also learn and see the value. So I, I couldn't agree more. Awesome, awesome. So we have a question from our chat line from Jennifer. Um, and she is asking, how have you seen your organization align sales and marketing to retain customers? So Jenny, I know this is your sweet spot, so we'll start with you. Yes, huge topic, uh, super passionate about this. Um, so at Sixth Sense, our commitment of putting the customer first really came to life last year when they decided to make customer marketing an official department. And so before it was, um, one person underneath um, product marketing. And so we grew our team. I actually was in customer success at Sixth Sense. So I moved over to lead the customer marketing team. And we grew our team from zero to six in under nine months. And so I think the commitment from Sixth Sense to be, we need this customer marketing team to help be that, that bridge. You know, I keep talking about the revenue ops team to help be that bridge and kind of be in the center. And so I really feel like customer marketing is the bridge between customer success and marketing and sales because customer success is, is kind of sales, right? At the end of the day, I mean, it's kind of sales. They're, they're taking care of the customers and they got to make sure that they get their contracts renewed and they're solving world problems for all the customers and, and doing all the things. But um at the, at the end of the day, they're kind of doing the sales revenue. It's all about the revenue team as a whole. And so um, kind of being that cohesive um, group and seeing that Six Sense is willing to invest so many people. So whether that's building our customer community, so we're, we've got customer community, we've got strong advocacy, we've got strong um, you know, experience team. And so we kind of have these pillars that we're focused on for our customers. Does that help? I think that that was a great, um, great answer. And yourself, Caroline? You know, I don't have much to add. I think Jenny summarized that pretty well. And, um, you know, when you when you think about the customer and that's what you think about, whether you're in sales and marketing, um, I think decision making becomes easy. You know, listening to customer feedback, you know, whether you're using Medallia or some kind of survey to get those qualitative responses you'll find that most of the time you can't, you can, and sometimes you can't pinpoint to a specific department or group. And so this customer experience team has to be able to solve for those problems. And so then it, it becomes, 
a organizational kind of problem solving versus a specific group. And so that's how we, I think it also adds to the alignment of all the different uh, groups in the organization. So that customer experience is, is, is pretty important. And I think it, it helps bring alignment when people understand the, the, the pain points, if you will. Awesome, awesome. Um, so Jennifer has asked another question. Um, what are some best practices to align your partners to drive success through marketing automation? Um, I know that this is one of your areas in the past. Caroline, do you want to share kind of what you've experienced in regards to getting partners involved? Yes, and Tracy, by partners, you mean like vendors or do you mean like channel partners or just, you know, in general? Um, I would assume that it means channel partners or like ecosystem partners. Yes, um, that's a good question. And it's, uh, in, as I mentioned earlier, some customers are a little resistant to change and like the way things have been done. And so when you talk about, okay, now you're going to get everything online or digitally, when when they're so used to being able to get a hold of someone, and I'm sure the banking industry faced the same kind of issues when every, everything switched from banking to online. Uh, I think uh, it's a it's a journey, and I think you mentioned patience as being one of the the key things to keep in mind in in this in this journey of going digital or with marketing automation. But I think once they see the benefits of uh, being able to self service, so if if I'm able to look at my invoices online, I'm able to pay my bills online, I'm able to get information I need without waiting for the offices to open. When, and when you start articulating those benefits um, and and when companies get really good at knowing what you need before you even know you need it, which I think marketing automation can bring, I mean, you you will, you know, your, your customers will be delighted and, and you know, just um, for no reason, just continue to do business, right? Because you they feel like you know what they need before they need it. So you go from, being able to self-serve to being able to know what they need before they need it. And then you turn these customers into brand advocates or these partners into brand advocates. Um, so from a channel mark, channel partner perspective, when we talk about automation and they're able to self-serve on training, self-serve on, you know, where they're at with their sales. Um, if you have a, you know, partner atmosphere where there's, there's different levels of partners like tiers, you know, gold, silver, bronze, and they're able to see what they need to do to keep their status. Um, if they have, if there's a points program for incentives, I mean, all these things can, can um, bring them along that journey a lot faster when they see the benefit and the value of being able to just um, access things uh, digitally online on their own. So that's what I would say is um, a benefit that we've seen with our partners with regards to uh, automation. And it just makes their life easier and simpler, which is also a goal of ours is to make doing business with us a lot easier is to make sure that they are they have access to all these online tools. So that would be my answer. Right. And Jenny, I know you've done more with you know customers, but I'm guessing in other roles you've been involved with partners as well. Any, you know, insights that you share from that prior experience? Yeah, I mean, from us, I guess from my perspective, and I don't, I don't know if this is the perspective that Jennifer is looking for or um, Caroline. I mean, she sounds like she has great experience, but for me and our role, we have lots of partners at Sixth Sense. So, for example, we've got lots of software partners that we work with, and our our technology complements one another, right? And so. How do we leverage marketing automation to help raise awareness of X number partner solution or the better together story? I think really it's the better together story from my chair today where I find marketing automation super helpful in being able to, being able to tell, help us tell that story in a variety of ways. We've got the insight into who's got what. We can tell who's looking when for what. And then we can act on that. And so I think from my perspective, it's the better together. Jennifer, I have no idea if that's even close to what you're looking for. <laughs> I think it sounds great. I love it. 
Well, we just have a couple minutes left here as we're getting up on the hour, but I just want to kind of highlight some of the things that Jenny and Caroline shared today. You know, really marketing and sales alignment isn't really about marketing and sales. It's about bringing that great customer experience. And so that's a, that's a huge highlight. I think that's where we started. And just sharing as far as, you know, starting and working backwards, right? Figuring out what those goals are. So don't just add marketing automation because you know it's going to solve some problems with marketing and sales. Know what the goals are and then, you know, implement the platform, but then do the specific things that are going to drive those goals so that you do have an opportunity to show value with marketing automation and continue to drive that forward. You know, one of the things that we continue to see is that resources that know a marketing automation platform are very challenging to find. You know, at Leadus, that's what we do as far as a Marketo perspective. And so trying to find those resources are helping companies fill gaps with what they need. And, you know, it continues to be a huge challenge, not just for, you know, people that have Marketo, but people that have any of the other platforms as well, because, you know, people are marketers, right? They're used to seeing, you know, I create collateral, here's the pretty stuff, I do the messaging. But now marketing is asked to be technical as well. And so one of the things that as we look to build out teams or talk with clients, we always talk about marketers who are technically curious. And I think those are the kind of resources that can really help these initiatives go a long way. Um, you guys also mentioned, you know, the right data, uh, making sure that you have that available in the systems, but also data-driven decisions you know, so as you start small, you keep making decisions based on what the data is telling you and so that you can actually show some success and move forward. So I think those are just really great, um, you know, pieces of information to share with the audience here today. Um, Caroline and Jenny, I absolutely appreciate you guys getting on and kind of sharing your, um, you know, your stories and your experience and your insights from Sixth Sense and Anderson Windows and, of course, all the companies that you've, you know, worked at before. Um, Anna and, you know, Chelsea from Adobe, thank you so much for, you know, supporting us and getting this um, event put together. We really appreciate it. Um, we will make the recording available um, as well as provide the marketing automation progression model that we talked about early on as well that highlights the people, process, and technology to get these marketing automation initiatives off the ground and get that sales alignment uh, with marketing that everyone's looking for. So thank you, um, you know, particularly again, Jenny and Caroline, thank you for joining the call today and sharing and thanks everybody for attending. Have a wonderful afternoon.